So let's take a look at how to stitch out a single standalone embroidered applique letter using the designs from Express Yourself. What I'm going to do now, I have a piece of background fabric. I don't need a piece of batting here. I do need an extra piece of stabilizer. Now what I've done here, did a little preparation in advance. I took my piece of stabilizer and I drew a center line on it, vertical, horizontal, so I know exactly where the center of this letter is. Um, I like to use either an extra fine point Sharpie pen or a 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil. Didn't mention those in the earlier supply list because they're specific to just doing the embroidered applique without the quilting in the hoop. So, piece of stabilizer with the markings already drawn on it and my piece of background fabric. I'm gonna put the piece of background fabric with the piece of stabilizer and making sure that the right side of the fabric is the right side up. Um, almost made the mistake of having the wrong side matching the stabilizer. That wouldn't have been good at all. Um, now I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I am going to stitch a uh, stitch right along the lines that I drew using a four millimeter long stitch length. Now what I'm doing is I'm kind of basing the fabric to the stabilizer but I'm also using this stitching line to mark the center on the fabric without actually having to draw any lines on the fabric. I've had a couple of times when I've used a supposedly removable fabric marker and because I'm Fusing an applique shape in place, applying high heat to the fabric, my marking pen has stayed on the fabric and that can lead to some unhappy results. So mark the stabilizer, sew it using your sewing machine. So the, it's actually the bobbin thread that's gonna show up on the background fabric. Um, once I've done that, I can take my hoop, which I put stabilizer into the hoop, I'm gonna take that to the embroidery machine and I'm going to stitch out color number one. And that is going to stitch a simple crosshair in the center of the hoop and that's gonna show me where to align the background fabric in the hoop so that my design is exactly where I want it. Now, this might seem like a little bit of overkill given that I'm only stitching it onto one piece of fabric. I could kind of sort of get that into the middle of the hoop, but in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to show you how I can get a whole line of letters going on all on one piece of fabric. And so it's gonna be really important to know how to get the design exactly where you want it on the piece of fabric. So, color number one, placement line, stitch it right onto the piece of stabilizer. Then I am going to bring in my portable ironing board. And this is actually a June Taylor cushioned quilters square and blocker. The thing that I love about this is I can take a pin, I can push the pin into this board and the pin's gonna come all the way out the bottom. Now, the thing about that is, first off, it's gonna scratch up your table. So make sure you never actually do push it all the way through. Second off, it's gonna give me a really nice pivot point and I will show you why I need that right now. So I've got my portable ironing board and I'm going to put the hoop that's had color number one stitched onto the stabilizer. I'm going to take my background fabric and I'm actually going to make sure that I've got background fabric up. I don't want to stitch right onto the stabilizer. That would be really bad. Um, I almost did that earlier too. Um, background fabric up. I'm going to put the pin right in the intersection there of my lines and now I'm going to take that same pin and I am going to put that pin right through the intersection that's stitched out onto the stabilizer and I'm going to push that pin in as far as it goes so it's right into the board but it's not coming out underneath and scratching my table. Now see how I've got a really good pivot point here so what I'm going to do now I can lift up the fabric and because I've got markings on the top and the bottom of my piece of fabric, I can make sure that that line on the fabric is perfectly aligned with the line that's stitched out on the stabilizer. So I can check the top and bottom to make sure that I've got everything straight and then I'm going to check on the sides too, just for an added confirmation that I'm really in the center. Now, as I said, this is a little bit of overkill if I'm just doing one letter onto one small block, but if you want to put the letter exactly where you want it, 
say on an apron or on a towel or on a tote bag, or if you've got multiple letters going on one piece of fabric, then this is going to be really important. So I consider this to be really good practice for a simple thing so that when I'm coming to do the slightly more complicated thing, then I've got it down and it's really easy. Before I move this, I almost forgot to do this. I actually need to tape that piece of fabric in place. So I'm going to take some of my scotch tape and I'm going to be really nice and generous with it. And I'm going to hold that right along the top edge of the block. And I'm going to take a second piece and I'm going to hold that right along the bottom edge of the block. Now I'm going to remove the pin. Don't need that anymore. So now that I've taken the pin out, before I return the hoop to the machine, I'm going to do a quick check to make sure that the background fabric is perfectly aligned with the crosshair that's stitched onto the stabilizer in the hoop. To do that, I'm going to turn this wrong side up. So I'm actually looking at the back of the hoop. I'm going to hold this up to a light source. And because I can see the stitching on the stabilizer, if I'm holding up to a light source, I can also see the basting line that I stitched onto the background fabric and I should be able to see that those two are perfectly aligned. I'm going to say this again, this might seem like overkill for a single block, but when you're wanting to get your embroidery design exactly perfectly placed, this is going to be a really awesome technique, perfect placement every single time. So having got that exactly where I want it on my hoop, I am now going to go back to the embroidery machine. Now, I ran out of little hoops, so I am I did two hoopings in one here. Um, back onto the embroidery machine, we're going to look at the bottom hooping first. I've got my piece of background fabric exactly positioned onto the hoop. I'm going to now stitch out color number two, and this is a basting line. Now I know I've got the scotch tape holding everything in place, but I want to be absolutely sure nothing moves around. So a basting line, and then that's going to be followed immediately by the placement line that shows me exactly where to put the applique shape. So when I was doing the quilted in the hoop version of the block, color number two was going to stitch out the basting line and then go right into the background quilting. We're not doing any background quilting in this version of the block, so color number two now for the individual letters is going to do the basing line and is going to go straight into this placement line to show me where to put the applique shape. I've just realized that I don't have an applique shape to fuse in place right here, but you're going to go and fuse your pre-cut applique shape in place. That's going to give you something that looks just like this. I've got the pre pre-cut applique shape in place. It's fused really well, don't want that shifting around, and I've continued doing all of the remaining stitches. So that's got my specialty satin stitch with a triple stitch around the outside and the inside, and it's also for this particular letter got this gorgeous candle wicking which is going to give me the added design inside the letter, makes it look stunning. When you see this up close you are going to absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. 